Oh, so from the, from the Lurian perspective, your brain is basically something that acts, it acts in the world and perceives the world. And the back half of the brain, roughly speaking, is for perceiving, and the front half is for acting. Now, here's something to think about, you know, I'm sure you've been taught the prefrontal cortex is the seat of abstract thought. You know, or the seat of executive decision making, for example. It's like, I'm not so convinced about that theory for a variety of reasons, but one of the things that's, that is true about the prefrontal cortex is that during the course of evolution it grew out of the motor cortex so if you look at this representation, the top one there's the primary zone which is the motor strip and then the secondary zone which is the premotor strip and the tertiary zone which is the prefrontal cortex and basically what happened was that first animals learned how to act and then they learned how to represent actions before they implemented them so the purpose of thinking is to represent actions before you implement them but it's not only actions because there aren't only actions right, because to act you also have to perceive and so really what the prefrontal cortex does is run simulations of how a personality might operate, an embodied personality might operate in a fictional world and that's what you're doing when you're thinking it's also what you're doing when you're watching movies or reading fiction or any of those sorts of things, right? instead of having to act something out and potentially dying as a consequence of it, you can watch something being simulated and see what happens and then if the outcome is good you can implement it and if the outcome isn't good then you can let it die and so I think it was Alfred North Whitehead that said um, the purpose of thought is so that we can let our hypotheses die instead of us that's smart, that's a very smart thing and so wh what's happened in some senses that human beings have gone from evolution to meta-evolution right, instead of evolving we can model evolution and then implement the ideas, the, the personality, so to speak, that we think are most functional and we let, the, we let our fantasy do the selection instead of the actual world man, it's a brilliant solution, it's a brilliant solution so, in some sense, the sensory unit, which is the back half of the brain is setting up your frameworks of perception and integrating them and then the front half is determining how to sequence activities and modes of perception in order to act successfully in the world right? and so there's the actual implementation of the action and then there's the modeling of the implementation which is what gives rise to thinking and I, I do think that it's very useful to think of thinking as a simulated personality fundamentally you're running avatars of yourself in some sense in your imagination and trying to determine which ones are going to be successful now you may have noticed, given that I used the word avatar that we've also now figured out who acts, how to externalize the process of fantasy back into the actual world so that we can run simulations in fantasy on machinery and we can play out potentials that way instead of only having to do it in our brain you know, and it's... that's very, very smart that's... that's extraordinarily smart and it's really going to change things, God only knows for how so, one of the things about Luria's model, you see that there's primary, secondary and tertiary zones the tertiary zones are zones of integration the primary zones are zones where, especially in the sensory systems, where each sense is elaborated in its, in its highest resolution sense before it becomes integrated with the other senses and so the tertiary zones are actually areas of overlap between the, sense, between the senses so for example when you, when you read silently my experience of reading silently is I hear the words in my head so to speak well you might think, well how, you know you look at a word and you hear it in your head how, how in the world is that possible? and the answer is your eyes are using your auditory system so there's overlap between the visual and the auditory system in the tertiary zones and so basically what you're doing is hearing with your eyes and you know, your consciousness has this property of unification, right? it's sort of like a unified experience and Luria believed that it was the tertiary zones that gave rise to that phenomena of unified experience he's a very smart character so, the point is, is that the motor unit is basically utilized, the part of us that, that does planning, forward planning and forward thinking is utilized to lay out simulated personalities in the world that's a good way of thinking about it so, okay, so that's one kind of neurological model 